Back in September, the computer graphics hardware company NVIDIA released a video in which they claimed to have recreated the photo of Buzz Aldrin descending the lunar module ladder and determined that he was illuminated on the shaded side due to sunlight reflecting off the lunar surface and also Neil Armstrong's spacesuit. On October 2nd, I released a video showing that this claim was wrong. Specifically, myself and others have performed experiments using surface material with the same albedo as the lunar surface, and the results show objects in darkness on the shaded side unless the aperture is open to the point that the sunlit landscape is overexposed. These results are supported by photos taken by the Chinese and Russian unmanned missions to the moon, which show the same thing. After comparing these results to NVIDIA's computer rendition, I concluded that they had deceptively upped the albedo of their CGI lunar surface to around 40%. We also determined that the additional fuel light offered by a second astronaut would only be partial at best. In the Apollo 12 EVA footage, which was also faked by the way, Pete Conrad has to stand right up next to the LEM ladder in sunlight to offer significant fuel lighting, otherwise the effect is dim and that's even with the landscape overexposed. And secondly, this is not the only photo allegedly taken by Neil Armstrong during Aldrin's descent. The first photo was allegedly taken when Armstrong was still shrouded in the Lem shadow, and yet Aldrin looks exactly as bright as he was in later shots. I'll try to watch your pliss uh, from underneath here. The NVIDIA team sold this lemon not only to the general public, but also their paying customers. A week after I produced my video, an NVIDIA customer by the name of Bo Chen forwarded me a letter of complaint. Apparently, he had purchased NVIDIA's Maxwell GTX 980 graphics card in the hope that he could recreate the Buzz Aldrin scene himself. Except, NVIDIA had not released the Apollo 11 demo in question. Bo Chen kept me updated on his situation with NVIDIA. A few days after I published his letter of complaint with his permission, they finally wrote back and said that they would indeed release the demo. But when? It wasn't until November 11, or nearly two months after they first typed about their global illumination demo, that NVIDIA finally made the demo available to the public. They even mentioned me in their blog. But some conspiracy theorists aren't buying it. One man has even used a cardboard box placed over asphalt and tiny models of the lander and an astronaut to recreate the landing. You can do better. More importantly, you'll have fun doing it. There's the poisoning the well fallacy again. It could also be argued that they have now resorted to the straw man fallacy, an argument based on a misrepresentation, or in this case, a poor representation of an opponent's position. The use of the box was to shelter the subject from the natural fill lighting provided by the blue sky. I also had one side of the box cut off so only sunlight would be allowed in. The reader is not told that in the blog. They also neglect to mention that the albedo of asphalt is the same as the albedo of the moon. The albedo value, which is the amount of light that's reflected into your eye basically from a surface, for the lunar soil is around like 12%. Not to mention the results of experiments by other individuals that arrived at the same results as I. Not to mention photos of the Soviet and Chinese spacecrafts that show their shaded sides in darkness. Not mentioning these results is a fallacy of omission. But the important thing is, we have the demo! Well, not exactly. As my computer lacks the graphics card required to play this demo, I sent the download link to Bo Chen and asked him to try it out. This was his feedback. There is no way to change the resolution. It is set below 1080p. Parentheses, I am not sure what is the resolution. Close parentheses. The frames per second is very slow, always below 30 FPS, and I have overclocked both my CPU, parentheses, 4.4 GHz, close parentheses, and my GTX 980. You can walk around in WASD mode, but the scene is very limited to the area that you can explore. I can definitely see that VXGI is not ready for prime time. There is no way this would work in a real game. Playing around, it does seem very realistic. However, there is no way to see what values were set. That is not visible to the end user. So for all I know, Nvidia could have fudged the numbers and there is no way we can prove it. If the numbers were set correctly, then I don't see any inconsistencies and it appears to be realistic and valid. NVIDIA however closed this demo so neatly that one cannot delve into the underlying values and parameters. 
so they could still have very well done some funny monkey business. Isn't that revealing? Since reflectivity is the key part of this discussion, one would have thought that the demo would have come with adjustable albedo settings for the landscape, astronauts and other objects. That way, you could know for sure what the albedo was, and see how the reflections compare at lower or higher settings. A few others also noted the lack of editability in the comments section of NVIDIA's blog. One person asked, How about sharing the UE4 project files? UE4 is Unreal Engine 4, the software used to create this Apollo 11 scene. And by project files, he would mean the files containing the 3D meshes, and more importantly, the image bitmaps that sit on top of those meshes. These image files are what would contain the color information, from which one could determine the corresponding albedo. So anyone with access to these image files for the ground and spacesuit would be able to find out what their albedos were. But, as luck would have it, the demo provides us with a means of getting this information directly. Because my computer couldn't read the demo, I asked Bo Chen to send me screen caps of it. He did just that. He sent me screen caps of various scenes taken with different settings, i.e. wireframes, with and without Neil, with and without the global illumination, etc. Of particular interest is a color-only mode, or as NVIDIA describes it, the color of the surface materials is shown without any lighting. Well friends, this is just what we need. To find out what the albedos actually are, we can determine the albedo in grayscale simply by measuring the red-green-blue values of the colors used. If the NVIDIA group are being truthful, then we should expect these values to be around 90% for Neil Armstrong's spacesuit and no more than 12% for the lunar surface. After all, that's what was claimed in their promotional video. The albedo value, which is the amount of light that's reflected into your eye, basically, from a surface, for the lunar soil is around, like, 12%, but the, the suits, because they're, like, a, a Teflon-coated material, they're around 80-90%. to 90%. After throwing this screen cap into Corel Paint Shop, and then hovering the eyedropper over the spacesuit, we can see it has red-green-blue values of 250, 233, and 214. The average of these numbers is 232.33. Taking the ratio of the maximum number, 255, white having values of 255, 255, 255, that tells us that the albedo is about 91%. That's a tiny bit on the high side, but otherwise an accurate match for what the spacesuit's albedo should be. Okay, now let's check out the lunar surface. We move the eyedropper over the moonscape and see it averages 78, 78, 78 varying between 72 and 88. To calculate the albedo, divide by 255, multiply by 100, and... 30.6%. I knew it! In their original presentation, NVIDIA told us that they did a lot of research to determine what the albedo of the lunar surface should be. To make sure that this is actually accurate, we did a lot of research on the different properties of the lunar soil, the spacesuit material, the material on the lander, we looked at a lot of photos, the lunar landing area, satellite imagery of that. We actually had to model the landing site, an astronaut that was realistic to the Apollo 11 spacesuits, model a land that matched the materials and the different colored regions on it and the shape of the lander legs and ladder and all that kind of thing. This all plays into how the image is created. I'd like to ask then, what sources did they consult that led them to believe that the moon has an average reflectivity of 30%? You can look this up anywhere. The moon's albedo averages 7-8% in visible wavelengths, or 12% across all light wavelengths. And that's just an average. In the Maria regions, which is where they are said to have landed, the albedo goes down to 4%. Surveyor 1, for example, measured the albedo of moon dust at the Ocean of Storms to be between 4 and 6%, so maybe 6% would be a better value to use there. The 30% value they used is closer to the albedo of the Earth. It's also the albedo of Portland cement, which, perhaps not coincidentally, is what the Mythbusters said they used in their experiment. 8% is closer to asphalt, which is why I used it in my experiments. And as an aside, a few years ago, I purchased some NASA-approved JSC-1A lunar regolith simulant. As you can see, it's also very dark, much like asphalt. That's because this simulant is essentially powdered basalt, and basalt also has an albedo similar to asphalt. Hell, 
NASA even claims that the Sea of Tranquility was a basaltic region of the Moon. If the color of the lunar surface were lowered to 8%, it would have a red-green-blue value of 21, rather than 78. Hard to believe, but that would mean the color-only mode would go from looking like this, to looking like this. The ground may look black like the sky, but in fact it has a red-green-blue value between 20 and 21, corresponding to the 8% reflectance. That being said, I dare say that the only research NVIDIA did on albedo was to figure out how high they needed to make it in order to get the result they wanted.